Welcome back, travelers, to your referral roadmap. This podcast is dedicated to helping you unleash your personal and business revenue potential by cultivating referral relationships. In this 10-part series, we're diving into the dynamic realm of prospecting. We'll be exploring how prospecting in business can be a key driver of success, offering insights and strategies to master this essential skill to build your own personal referral-based businesses. Today, we're talking about digital prospecting, thriving in a new era of sales engagement with our special guest, Ashley Quintana. Ashley is a partner and co-founder of Bridge Rev here in Oklahoma City. In her role, she develops leads and executes digital marketing strategies for the company's growth client, growing client base, including a Fortune 500 subsidiary and a NBA basketball team. Ashley's work can be found in the Hispanic Journal of Behavioral Science, and she is an OKC Biz 40 Under 40 honoree for her leadership in business and community. So with all of that, I know Ashley's going to bring tons of knowledge to the table for us. I can't wait to hear it. I'm sure you guys can't wait to hear it. So I did want to redefine what prospecting is, though, real quick for those travelers who are listening for the first time this season. So prospecting is the behaviors or activities that you execute that create referrals and or leads resulting in your revenue for your company, for you or your company, or as Athena likes to say, making it rain. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Athena, do you have a quick story um, to share with us this morning before we get started on the interview with Ashley? I do, but I just have to say, you guys, you're in for a treat. You're going to want to make sure that you... Um, save this one and take some notes. So if you're on a treadmill, on a walk, driving in your car, this is going to be one that you're going to want to listen to later with a um, pen and paper. So, but I do want to tell you guys um, a little bit. I recently went to a BMC, which is business masterclass with Darren Hardy. And he was telling the world business leaders that um, all paid to go he really emphasized how important embracing technology is going forward and what a tool we need to be able to understand the tool that it is and able to help us in business. But the bigger thing, and he spent much more time on, is that because we are in such a technology-driven time, the importance of human-to-human -human relationships more than ever, the businesses that will thrive will be businesses that make a human connection in their social media, in their um, points within their sales cycle. So I want you to think about that as we're talking about right now, we're going to be talking about digital marketing. And but we also have to remember everything that we do has to feel human to human. So think about that. As we go through today, I just wanted to share that with you. And I don't know about you guys, but I bet you if you're listening to this podcast, you're all about that. And that gets you excited too, because I'm about relationships and I bet you are too. So that just means it gives us an, an edge up. So that, I don't know about you, but I got all pumped up when I was like, okay, I can do that. So this is exciting. But Jada, before we get in with our interview with Ashley, you know, we've got these people that want the facts and figures. They don't want just my stories. So tell us the facts <laughs> and figures, doll. Of course. You know, I'm one of those people that loves the facts and figures. So I <laughs> um, did a little bit of research and found a LinkedIn study that I'll make sure is linked in the show notes. Um, they talk about the digital marketing trends to watch for in 2024. There's a number of them. So I'm just going to read off a few of them and then go into um, some additional statistics. But the ones that they said to look out for is um, personalization and mm -hmm. hyper or in hyper personalization. Yes. Social commerce, interactive content, augmented reality and marketing, the power of AI chatbots, metaverse and digital marketing, video marketing, conversational marketing, influencer marketing, and the list just continues to go on. And so Again, I will make sure that that is linked in the show notes for anyone that wants to read more on any of those. Um, and then in the WordStream blog that I found, they asked how competitive is the social media industry right now? And they came back with some very high numbers. So I'll just read those off that way I don't make, make anything up. But 93% of businesses are active on Facebook and 86% also take advantage of Facebook advertising. Currently, there are 67 million companies on LinkedIn in 2024, which increased from 55 million in 2023. Wow. 
just pause for a second. That is 12 wow. million more companies this year. Wow. Wow is right. <laughs> well, it does make and me then, think. I mean, I hate to interrupt you. I apologize, but it makes me no. think there's so much noise out there. How do you stand out? This is why we want to talk to Ashley because she is an expert to help us figure out how we stand out in all that noise. Wow. Exactly. Um, and then it kind of to go off of that, Athena, my last statistic is about 70 to 80 percent of people completely ignore paid digital ads. So what? How do we stand out? Wow. It's the question. Yeah. Well, I know. And I heard blood. um Darren was sharing, Darren Hardy was sharing that digital marketing is costing more and producing mm -hmm. less ROI, return on investment. So yep. I'm I'm excited to hear what Ashley is gonna tell us so that help us write our ships and make sure that we're going down the road the correct way. So Ashley, tell us about how did you get started in digital marketing? Tell us your, your story. Okay. Well, um, I've been in the digital marketing world for a minute at this point, but for me, it was really a process of going back to school. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't mean that literally, I mean that figuratively. Uh -huh. My background was in traditional advertising as a kid. I remember, um, on the weekends I got to host a radio show. And at that point I was passionate about communications. It was a fun thing that my church did on the weekends. I think I was like six years old and I got to take calls <laughs> wow. from kids saying, I'm having this problem with my mom and dad. What do you think I should do? And it was, so it was like, you know, 1-800 call Delilah, but it was, you know, I was a little kid. Um, <laughs> And I, I was that. passionate about media from that time. Like I, I remember being 12 and watching TV and thinking, you know what? I really hate how some of these commercials are just so badly produced and I want them to be better. And I, I was passionate about advertising for a really long time. So I went to school for communications. Um, and initially when we started, uh, the, the first company that I started, uh, we did multilingual advertising. We did work in Spanish. We did work in Vietnamese. We served a lot of different kinds of cultures. Um, and eventually we got to the point where we outran our network. You know, you get, everyone gets to that point, right? You, you know, certain people, you start a business or you make a name for yourself with the people that you know. And then you kind of get to this point where it's like, oh, I need to expand my network. And now where do I go? How do I prospect? What do I do? Uh, and so we hit that point. And we landed at that point on a digital marketing um, challenge opportunity. And we thought, you know what? We don't know who else we're going to talk to in our area in Oklahoma City, where we're located. And so we launched a digital campaign. We put together this little ebook. We started promoting it. I think all in, we probably spent under $200 on Google ads. And we got over 120 leads from that. Um, wow. We closed, I think, half a dozen pieces of business off of it. And at that point, my business partner and I looked at each other and said, hey, maybe we should think about going into this instead. And we took on a client and thought, man, we already did this once for ourselves. This is going to be great. And and we totally screwed it up. Like it was not, it didn't go as well as we <laughs> thought it was going to go. Thank you for being honest. Any stretch. Um, <laughs> and so we decided, yeah, I know, right? Just kind of fall flat on your face. We all have those moments. Amen. Um, and so we figuratively went back to school that year. Um, we kind of divided up different aspects of digital marketing and we consumed everything that we could get our hands on. We did a few different certifications. We um, kind of, my business partner and I just split up and he did a deep dive into SEO and I did a deep dive on advertising and how, you know, you make your online media spend go further and what the best practices are, all of that. And then toward the end of that year, you know, we kind of just kept our business status quo. And toward the end of that year, we moved one of our traditional advertising clients onto our digital marketing plans and they killed it during an off season. And I said, I think we figured this out. So at that point we pivoted the entire business to go into digital marketing. That's kind of how I got there. And at this point we've pivoted again, um, you know, pivoted more into software consulting and the tools that help you build programs like this and building out the systems that mm -hmm. allow you and enable you to do that. Um, so it's been a fun journey. That's what I can say. Wow. Well, and I just have to, for those listening may not know this, so I just want to share you, we are one of your clients, the home building company and um, the coaching company. 
we are your clients. And I just have to put a shout out to you. In the home building world, we had um, had some success. Interesting enough, I just have to say this. Even in, in the marketing world, there's a thing called an Addy Award. And an Addy Award is a marketing association who they come together and they decide who has done some piece of advertising art, if you will, and they give you an award. And our company won an Addy Award for our website, and that website was getting zero leads. And then we <laughs> hired Ashley and her team. And uh, we're not winning Addy Awards, but we get leads. So I'm just <laughs> telling you that. And so I keep that Addy, by the way, Ashley, over here on my shelf to remind myself consistently, it doesn't matter how pretty it is if it doesn't get you the results. Um, but we were wise enough to hire you and, and have you help us. So I really um, appreciate you guys. But right now, there's a lot of change. I know you guys have just changed in your business too, but can you share on your perspective right now, how is digital prospecting, how has it evolved in the last couple of years and where do you see the trends going forward? Oh man, it, it, it continues to change. Yeah. It, it really has changed more than I think I even anticipated okay. uh, when I went started down this path over 10 years ago. I think the first thing to consider is that regulation is catching up you know, data privacy is a thing that we're now much more aware of because of the digital world that we live in. You know, everyone has something in place to either protect your passwords or, you know, you get an alert when some of your uh, information was leaked, but it goes way beyond that. So a good example of this is that in the past, I remember eight plus years ago, I could target something so tightly on Facebook so tightly that I could do a combination of like gender and zip code and income and lifestyle preferences. And so with very little money, because you know I targeted so tightly, I could reach the exact audience that I was looking for. And today I can't run those campaigns anymore. Wow. I mean, I, I've, I've had them built from years ago for, for different customers, ourselves included mm -hmm. for our own company, and you can't run them anymore because of data privacy and regulations. And mm -hmm. so I feel like that's something to be aware of. I only think that that's going to increase. And I think as it should, right, you know, everyone needs mm -hmm. to have their privacy respected. Um, but I feel like that's going to continue to change. I feel like we're also going to end up seeing an uptick to say it this way in advertising, if you've been on your Amazon Fire TV lately, or even on Disney Plus, you're starting to see some ads get put in again, even if it's content that you have paid for and subscribed for, mainly on the premise of I don't have to watch ads anymore. Right. But it's because we're seeing this, we're seeing this reach because so many people have gone to that model, trying to do everything they can to cut out advertising that you know, companies are trying to find a way to get that message in front of you. Mm. And not only that, you know, um, AI, AI is the big, uh, you know, the big elephant in the room in every <laughs> conversation that I've been in lately. Um, I think that over time, people are going to start to be able to detect when something was written by AI. I know I can. I Last week, I was sharing with our team on Slack. I said, hey, I got this email and I read it. And as soon as I read it, I said, a bot wrote this. <laughs> a bot wrote this. Um, I said, on one end, I'm kind of flattered. I guess I sounded a little, I don't know, like it, maybe they, they really wanted it to sound good. Cause I know when I want something to sound good, I, I stick it into a bot and, you know, an, an AI and see what it's going to spit out, at least to make me sound just a bit better. Um, but for sure, I agree with uh, Athena, what you were saying uh, that Darren had shared with you, that those authentic and real conversations are becoming so much more important because not only is there a lot of noise and not only is there so much content and so much to see and everything is you know, available at your fingertips, um, but it's now available and it doesn't even feel real. Like it, you know, it, it, it lacks that human element. So I think it's not all bad, though. There's also that aspect of, you know, with AI, 
we're going to have the ability moving forward to get to really personalized and dynamic pricing mm -hmm. you know, to where you're mm -hmm. able to really tailor what's in front of somebody based on how they've behaved before. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're seeing this now with um, a lot of membership based websites coming about you know, where you have access to this content because you've paid to have access to this content. But not only that, because you engage with it so much, now we're able to tailor it to you. We know mm -hmm. that you watched all 90% of this podcast. You know, you heard 90% of this episode. And so we know that you're more interested in this subject more than you are in this one. So next time we see you around, that's what we're going to serve. And you know, so I think that mm -hmm. there's the aspects of it that, that are good. You know, you, everyone likes going to Netflix and getting recommendations of the things that you really liked. You know, um, and I think that power AI and automation is enabling that scale that large companies have to be put into the hands of small business owners if you can only be able to use it. You know, so I have a question for you, um, you know, um, and I'll just say this from a personal experience. So doing coaching and in my coaching right now, we're changing our target market. We're leveling up, if you will, scaling up. And because they targeted the data driven target market for advertising is not as available as it once was. Right. And, but yet understanding how, the importance of knowing your target market, how do you suggest somebody like me who is scaling a business and knows that they need to get in front of a particular audience online? What is your piece of advice for them? I mean, is it, is there technology or do I need to have a firm like yours help me? I, I think that there is a scale and a season for everything. Okay. And I think first things first, you just got to start. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what you don't know if you don't get started. Mm -hmm. um, and I still think that data is everything. You know, when you build a system and a process to know your numbers, it makes it easy to tweak the numbers, to increase your results. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have to start somewhere. You've got to start with some sort of process. Um, I think a multi-channel approach is becoming more and more important. Not only does it keep you from being the nagging person, either texting somebody or in their email inbox consistently, <laughs> yeah. you know, but you still have that touch point, right? Mm -hmm. Where they can see you if you go to LinkedIn and they see you maybe if they go to that meetup that you go to twice a month, you know, just to stay connected to people. Um, but I still think that data plays a really important role in understanding your potential customers. And so while this is not necessarily the key to reaching them from a volume standpoint, I think it is the key to reaching them on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So I got a good story here, actually. Yeah. Um, I remember years ago, uh, we were working with a landscape materials company and I remember that they were saying, hey, we really need to up our social media game. We know that, but we don't just want to post about our products. We don't know really what to post about anymore. Like what, what do people want to see? What do they care about? And so I remember, okay, the answer is in the data. The answer is always in the data. You remember nothing else of what I said today. <laughs> the answer is always there. You just have to Mike find it. moment. Everybody listen yeah. to that. <laughs> Glad it doesn't lie. <laughs> yeah. The answer is always there. You just have to find it. And that's the thing. Most people don't realize what they have because they don't look. And they don't know where mm. to look. So I remember that um, that time, this is a few years ago, um, we did a deep dive on the data. And what we did was we went through all the analytics available to us about their website. And what we found <clears throat> was that among the things, we found a lot of things, but one of the coolest things that we found was that 70%, over 70% of the people that visited that company's website also visited pet-related websites. You know, like Chewy.com and wow. all these other pet-related websites. So what did we do? We built an entire social media campaign around furry friends. So we weren't just posting about their products anymore. And any time that we had the opportunity, it was kind of funny, actually, because the answer was there multiple ways in which they looked. The owner would bring his dogs with him to the stores oh. because that he, he also had his furry friends, right? Yeah. And so we leveraged that. And that's the thing. I feel like sometimes we box ourselves into mm. thinking, okay, well, my data 
and I don't have that set up and I haven't set up Google Analytics and I haven't set this up, I haven't done all these other things. You need to, and that's important, but you have to understand that that data is available to you as long as you're listening and paying attention. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily have to have that data point from the website. If I just looked around at what does the owner do? You know, what do the employees care about? What do the people who walk in here talk about? You know, those points, like it's just real data at that point that tells me what these people care about. And so while the scaling the numbers part is a bit harder, the scaling what really matters in that deep personal connection isn't. It's just listening to people. It's paying attention to what they care about, paying attention to what they talk about and being there on the same level. And I think that's the other half of the equation because, you know, we talk a lot about being authentic online and it's true. I mean, I, I think it's completely valid, something that we need to pay attention to. But if I don't care about pets at that point, then maybe I need to look and find something else because I can't speak genuinely to that. Does that make sense? Yes. Like you, there, mm -hmm. there's two halves to that. There's the part where you have to care about it mm -hmm. and you have to understand what your potential customers care about and, and meet somewhere in the middle, find something where you overlap. Mm. I once knew a salesperson in media sales. Um, and I remember we were taking his whole system and we were translating it to a CRM. He had never used a CRM before. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you talk about when you go, you know, and meet with people. What do you talk about? And he said, well, you know, the usual stuff like football and, you know, my job. And I said, well, what do you mean football? And he said, well, I really like football. Like I follow college football. And I said, okay, so, you know, like every mascot, every, you know, every team out there. And he said, yeah, I, I watch it all. I love it all. So I said, so when you go and you meet with a potential customer, do you know what school they went to? And do you, you know, use the mascot as like your entry point? How about those Rams or how about those Cowboys or whatever it might be? And he said, yeah. So what did we do? In his CRM, we set up a personalized property that was university and mascot. Wow. So all we did was take what he already did, what his touch point, his personal touch point, we translated it to a digital world. I think that's the key to a lot of mm. this. You just have to take what you know is you, what is authentically you, and translate that. Translate it into a digital world where it makes sense. And it will speak to the people it needs to speak to. It'll draw in the right kinds of clients. That was a mic drop moment. I hope mm. everybody heard what she said. That And that goes back to the personalization, hyper-personalization, and human-to-human -human touch point. I love that. I um, Ashley, you guys have just recently changed your business model. Can you explain that and why you guys um, made that change and what that will do for your clients? Yeah. So we recently moved uh, a little bit out of marketing. Like we'll, we'll still offer advice and direction mm -hmm. where it relates to digital marketing, but we kind of grew with our customers. You know, I think that's the other thing to note that as you work with people, it will also change you. And it should, because as people, we should have impacts on each other. Um, and as our customer base grew, they would begin to ask us questions about sales or about customer service or about all these other touch points and areas of their business. And in part, it made total sense, right? Because really you should be marketing at every single one of those stages, whether someone's a customer or a prospect. And we kind of grew, we, we build everything on HubSpot and at heart, what we are is a HubSpot consulting firm. We build things on top of the software. Um, and for those of you who don't know, HubSpot is a CRM. It's free to get started. Um, it's a CRM I recommend from a, it's free to get Me started. Too. So you could use it forever. We're not getting paid. <laughs> Yeah, totally free to get started. And if you need a system to just start building on, just just go and create a free account and start. It, it's wonderful. It's light years away from any of the other free tools on the market. Um, they've got the paid version, obviously, lots of paid versions up from there. Um, <laughs> but we pivoted because we loved the software so much. We were building so many things on it that it just made sense. We were getting to the point where our customers needed solutions that we didn't sell. <laughs> you know, we weren't offering at the time. Um, but in the vein of you should always be really focused in order to say yes to something, you have to say no to something else. And so we 
began saying no to the ongoing marketing work to say yes to the technical aspects, to be able to build the tools that can move you forward for whatever your initiative might be. Oh, I love it. Well, and I know that um, we are on that bandwagon and we're thankful that we are growing with you and excited about what that will, all the different touch points. I'm just what little I'm at, I've been exposed to, to your new direction is a lot of interaction um, and touching the client throughout the process. And I think that what is really important here is in the digital marketing, remember you guys, this is something that I, I say often when I teach, marketing is about creating a conversation. It's not about selling. That's the thing I see is too many people do marketing on the digital world and they're trying to sell their product where really you want to engage them, get them to your website, right? Get them to interact, interface with you. And so I think that that's really important for people to understand that as you're listening, remember marketing is about creating a conversation, even if it's a conversation with your website. It's about getting them to come to you. And you guys have experts at that. And now you've evolved where you're going to help the touch points in the buying system. And I'm very excited about that. One of, as you're sitting here, you're, you obviously, you're very humble. So you're not going to say how successful you are, but I know how successful you are. And you have a huge heart. What is something that you want to tell the people listening in regards to digital marketing that is like a piece of a nugget that you're like, you just need to know this, embrace this, and it will help you be successful. I think there's this mindset that social media has helped to push. And I, the influencer culture in part, um, and I know that it's opposed to a lot of the views that we grew up with and, and rightfully so. And it's this idea that if you just get this one thing right and you do this one thing, this one campaign, then, you know, I set this up one time and that automation will make it to where I'm free from all the work and I don't have to do any of this. Um, and social media has really helped to push that. Like, oh, I can just do this one big thing and I'm, I'm good and I'm set. And that mindset um, really works against the way that this landscape should work. Like it, it is counter to the way that it is intended to work. I think what I would want people to know is you have to think of automation, think of AI, think of all of these digital tools as the opportunity to free up your time to be more intentional, not to free yourself from the work altogether. Mm -hmm. I feel like people just don't get that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in part it's because that that line, that sentiment that is being pushed online is – oh, I'm doing this and I'm setting this up so that I don't have to work and I don't have to touch anything and I don't have to do anything. No, like that that's not what we were designed for. It's not what we were intended for. So if you just think of automation, AI, of all social media, all the tools as the opportunity for you to become more intentional, you can be effective. Mm. You got to start somewhere. What you've done in the real world will translate to the digital world. It's going to take time. And it is totally a learning curve. It is a process, but you can do it. You just have to start. You got to operate in this faith and excitement of what could happen, not in fear of what you're going to mess mm. up. Mm. Great advice. Great advice. Well, Jada, how do, how do people connect with Ashley? Yeah, so I will put Ashley's um, contact information. I'll put her email and her website in the show notes below. Ashley, if you want to just say what your email is, that way, if anyone's listening, I'll also put them in the show notes. But just in case, what is the best email for you? My best email is my company email. It's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, at Bridge Rev, so B-R-I-D-G-E-R-E-V, Rev.com. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I will make sure that's in the show notes so anyone that wants to get a hold of you can. And then other than that, we did just want to invite our travelers to join the Success Revolution. It is our weekly blog fueled by relationships, referral, and revenue. Where you can get those weekly growth strategies straight to your inbox so that you can take control of your sales, your revenue, and achieve your full potential. The link to subscribe will be in the show notes below as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe our podcast wherever you're listening so you can um, join us next week as Athena bring some real talk and real strategies for the last podcast of this season. We can't wait to see you then.
Thanks, Ash. Thank you.